Welcome here to Atomic TV and Art Daywell Gymnasium. I'm Max Schuster alongside Jeff Morrow and Tanner Schuster. Uh, tonight we have an exciting matchup to say the least. We have the number one, currently number one seed in the MCC Kamaikan Braves and hosting Richland Bombers. Uh, what, I mean, what are your thoughts tonight, Jeff? Well, I think uh, obviously this is going to be the first of two times they meet during the regular season, uh, but it, it's going to give them, uh, both teams, a chance to feel each other out. kamaikan has been off to a pretty hot start. I think they're, what, 9-1? and one. And uh, Richland, is, it, they've had a couple losses, but, you know, they've played some pretty tough teams. They played Davis uh, up in Yakima uh, a couple weekends ago, and, and they lost by three. But um, And they beat Southridge the other night. It was a close game. You know, and I was kind of surprised about that, but I, I think by the, you know by the time we get into the, near the end of the regular season, Richland will be uh, running on all cylinders because that's just the way an Earl Stroyfer team works. Yeah, and uh, this Kamaikan team obviously uh, really headed by Peter Dress. Oh, uh, um, yeah, uh, and, and it's no question about it, both offense and defensive sides. And you know, talking to Coach Stroyfer, he said it about Shiawana, mm -hmm. or, or I mean. Uh, Davis, um, you ha you play a different game when it's just one guy really doing it all. Right. Um, and, and going in this game, they know that's what that's what they're gonna have to do to shut down Peter Dress and, and hopefully contain him enough to to let their guys let their guys do their thing. And I am very excited. We'll send it down to PA announcer Michael Valise to give you introductions for tonight's matchup.
welcome back here to Art Daywell Gymnasium on in Atomic TV. Man, you can hear the crowd is present. It is a packed house. And the anticipation is here. No more time to wait. Tip-off is almost underway. For the Braves, it'll be Peter Dress facing off against Luke Westerfield for the opening tip-off. Tips is won by the Braves. This is Wagger setting up the offense. First trip down. Nice wide open lane. That's Kinsey, but it's blocked and it stays. Braves ball. Good drive there, but even better defense there by the Bombers. Dress inbounding for the Braves. Into Kinsey. Over to Wagger. Guarded by Woodard. It's tipped away by Woodard. Still Kamai can ball. Looks like Jack Forbes has the job of uh, trying to stop Peter's dress. In the corner. Wegman, no good. Now it's Northrop, Northrop driving in the corner. It's Hornibet. They'll swing it around to Woodard. Pump fakes, doesn't like his shot. Drives inside, but they'll kick it out. Northrop jump stops from mid-range. Jumper no good. He kind of hesitates on that first look, but I tell you what, if he takes that shot on that first look, he'll he'd probably, he'd probably make it. Woodard comes down with the rebound. Gets it out to Westerfield. Westerfield fires from deep. Not a shot you typically see him take. Couldn't connect. Dress setting up the offense. Drives left and he's fouled by Forbes. This is just uh, for Kamaika. This is one of those things where, where they uh, Peter Dress is going to get his points, I would think, but he's got to get help for the other four guys to for Kamaika to do well against Richland, and that's happened so far this season. Swagman. He'll swing it over to Kinsey. From three, that's no good. Rebound by Westerfield. Oh. And he'll say it's out of bounds. <laughs> yeah, was, he was had almost lost control of that ball, and uh, Brian Manili was standing right there and hit him. And you get Manili looks over at Josh Woodard and goes, "My bad." Now it's Wagger to dress. Dress from three. He gets it to go. Nothing but net. Three points good from Peter Dress. Even under heavy con contestion, he still makes it happen. Over to Woodard. He'll get it to Westerfield. Westfield looking for someone. Down low, it's Forbes. Forbes goes up. Fouled on his way up, and he's going to the line trying for two. It's on Peter Dress. Both those guys after that play, they're hurt. <laughs> yeah, they're both in some pain. <laughs> Forbes makes the first. Second one good from Forbes as well. Now it's Wagger. Oh. Over to Kinsey. Got a good zone, zone press there. Wagman. Dress from three with Westerfield's hand in his face. Can't connect. Westerfield mid-range turnaround shot. That's money. It's a great shot, great look by Luke, and he makes it happen. That's more of his zone to shoot than that uh, three-pointer. Woodard ends up with the ball in his hands. Bombers forcing a turnover on defense. 
Out to Northrop. Northrop from deep. Northrop can't connect. Woodard gets the rebound. From the elbow, that's good. Kinsey to Wegman. Wagner drives baseline, gets it, somehow sneaks right under Westfield, gets two points. Exactly, despite the size difference, he still makes it happen and gets that layup for the Braves. Woodard over to Forbes. Forbes driving, goes up, ball is stolen out of his hands. Kinsey up and under. Athletic play, but couldn't get it to fall. Woodard drives, goes up left hand, rolls around, and nice. Made it look easy. Now it's Kinsey, guarded by Woodard. I'll get over to Wagger. Dress. His ball is stolen by Woodard. Goes up, turns defense into offense. Great hustle play there by Josh Woodard. Woodard just making it happen on both sides of the ball, giving the Bombers some momentum and forcing the Brace to call a timeout. What's nice about that too is, is Earl Stryford is, is mixing up their defensive looks. That was his own defense with a little bit of a trap and it worked quite well that play. Yeah, and, and Woodard has been known in the MCC as a scorer yes, since freshman is. year. Yep. Um, and this year, with the loss of Jace Volblinski on the defensive end, it's been his job to step up as that, as that defensive guy. And it, we've seen it a lot. I mean, here in this game, he's been the guy who ends up with the ball going the other way almost every time, uh, whether it's on a rebound or, or a steal like that one. What I like about him, too, is that, you know, if he wanted to, he could score a lot more points, but he likes to get the other guys involved in the game. So he, if you do that, you've got to be a leader, and that's what he's been this year. Actually, he's been that the last couple of years. I'm excited to see uh, how Westerfield does tonight. It's, yeah. He doesn't really have a, a big guy matchup at, at, to his height, but, I mean, Peter Dress as 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 athletic as he'll get yeah. um, uh, or as he'll go against all year so we'll see how Westfield and they've had their fair share of battles going back to oh, AAU yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I mean about everyone on this court has played each other at least once before before the high school level so lots of lots of history between these two teams and 10-5 here halfway through the first quarter right yep let's see if Kamaikin can answer Going with that three quarters court press again. Kenzie gets it into Wegman. Now it's Dress. Guarded by Woodard. Howard. Newest check into the game. Now I'll get over to Wegman again. They run into each other, and it's over in the back call. Just a miscommunication. You cannot have that here in this game. Possessions are really everything, and they just sold one out right there off a simple mistake that really should not have happened. Woodard will set up the offense for the Bombers. Oh. Forbes tried to find Westerfield up top, just a little too high. In for the game, or in the game for the Braves now will be Gavin Buchanan and Xavion Gladney. Gladney, I think, uh, he, he started the season late for Kamaikin because he got hurt during the football season. But he was a starter for them last year. There's a steal. And now it's Woodard. To Northrop. Woodard cutting. Tries to go across the key to uh, Westerfield. Now in the corner, it's Woodard. Woodard, good from beyond the arc. Good look by uh, Westerfield to get it to him. Woodard's first three uh, since Davis last week. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see if he, that shot can keep going. Another steal by Woodard. Gets it to Forbes, and he's fouled 
on his way up. He'll be going to the line, shooting two. Good job by the Bombers, pushing the court, forcing the, forcing the shot, and then ultimately forcing the foul by Forbes there. Woodard, by the way, has scored uh, nine consecutive points for the Bombers. Forbes makes the first. Second one good as well. Wagger in the game for the Braves. It's Wegman checking out. Buchanan. Buchanan has it. Didn't like his shot, gets over to Wagger. Wagger driving on Westerfield. Goes up, no good. Westerfield just using his height. Forbes spinning around. Baseline jumper. Just elevated and got it to drop. And it's a timeout called. 11 0 uh, wrist and run here. And it's a full timeout with two minutes and seven seconds left in the first quarter. We'll send you to break. Seventeen to five, the Bombers lead. Braves with the ball, and they'll get into Wagger. Over to Buchanan, in the corner. It's Howard, stolen by Woodard. Another steal. Woodard goes up, takes it, takes it on the defense end, drives to the rim, gets a nice looking lay in there. Gladney hands it off to Dress. Dress got the defenders to jump. He drives. Turnaround jumper. That's good. It's a good shot there by Dress. Despite all the commotion down there in the key, he makes it happen. He gets the jumper to fall. That snaps a 13 0 Richland run, too. Westerfield finds Forbes cutting back door. Up and under, no good. And it's, it'll be a foul called on Woodard. It's his Ooh. first foul. And can't, can't get them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, he's been playing super aggressive. It's time that he was going to get called for a foul, but yeah. that's a good foul. He almost had it. Wagger. Inbounds, gets it to Kinsey. Now it's Westerfield, hands it off to Forbes. Forbes over to Woodard. Woodard takes one jab step, goes back the other way. Good job by Josh Green, space there to get the shot up, just couldn't quite get it to fall. And that was Woodard's first missed shot of the night. Kinsey driving on Woodard, over the top, no good, brought in by Northrop. Hornivet goes up, ball is tipped. On his way, no shot clock. Coach Manili calling for one shot. Oh, 
It's Kinsey. Kinsey from three. That's off the front rim. No good. Brought in by Northrop. Under five on the clock. It's Northrop gets it across half court. Hornovet. No good. <laughs> Thought Northrop was going to take it. But after one quarter play, it's 19 to nine. The Bombers lead the Kamaikan Braves. As we come back, the second quarter of play just around the corner. We'll see what both sides can do. I mean, we have two different situations. We need, or, or for the Bombers, they need to keep their energy going, keep their shots falling. And for Kamaikin, they need to figure something out on the offensive side. Turn, o turn over the ball way too many times to, to even keep this a game. Uh, so we'll see what, what they do coming out of the break. What's impressive is I look at the stats and Josh Woodard has five steals already. That's that's usually a, a full night's work for most players. Into Westerfield. Gets it to Forbes. Forbes to the corner. Corner vet. Pump fakes, drives. No good. Westerfield fights for the rebound. But it's Malasani coming down with it. Wegman driving. Goes up and it's blocked by Westerfield. Woodard fires from three, no good. Kinsey, oh. Malasani, and now to Wagger. Stolen by Northrup. Northrup goes up, two points the other way. Good job by Northrop and the defense. They're just controlling those passing lanes and just making it really difficult for the Braves to make anything happen on offense. That's Northrop's first two points of the game, and if you get him going as well as Woodard, uh, Kamaika's in for a long night. Now it's Dress. Wegman, that's good from beyond the arc. Riker Wegman, I mean, really good looking shot there. Woodard over to Hornibet. Gets a screen from Westerfield. Had him back door and gets it to him. And they'll call Northrop for a travel. Just started walking before he put the ball on the ground. Wagger sets up the offense. Three points, in and out, no good. Westfield looking inside to Forbes, didn't like it. Now it's Northrop. Northrop over to Woodard. 
Back to Woodard. Down low to Forbes. Goes up, foul on his way, and he's going to the line. Great, great pass there by Woodard, just and great job by Jack being aggressive to the rim. Just couldn't quite get it to fall, but he's still taking shots on the line there. That, that's kind of what I'm looking at so far tonight. Rissland has taken the ball to the rack, whereas Kamaya can, can be hesitant with some of their shots. First and one, first one, no good by Forbes. Yeah, and since you know, it, 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 Mike is going to have to be a little bit more aggressive if they're going to get back in this game right now. Second one, no good as well. Dress comes down with the rebound. Wagger gets it to Buchanan. Down low, Wagger, wide open, finds it laying real easy. Forbes will set up the offense. Over to Northrop. Woodard pulls up, nothing but net. No swing it around. It's in Dress's hands. Drive, and he can't get his feet set, and that's a traveling call. Dan Chris Daniels checks in for Jack Forbes, and Xavion Gladney checks in for Peter Dress. Jack Forbes has done a great job on defense against uh, Peter Dress, but that, that was uh, Northrup that made that play. And so they're all going to have to take some turns uh, to stop Peter from scoring. Woodard. Gets it to Northrup. Northrup, same shot as Woodard took last time, same result. Just finding the empty holes in this defense and they're taking advantage of it and it's paying off for the Bombers. Gladney drives, kicks it to the corner, it's Wagger. They'll swing it around. Mid-range jumper, no good from Prunetta. In the corner, it's Howard. Now Buchanan. In the corner, Buchanan fires. That's good, rattled around and fell. Down low, it's Westerfield. Just over that front rim, and it goes. Good footwork there. Right to Daniels, and now it's Hornivet. He goes up, bang, slam a jamma. Lance Hornivet. Solid job by Chris to get it to Lance, and the fans love the dunks, man. Brunetta driving on Hornivet. He takes it to the lane and goes to the line, trying for three the old-fashioned way. It's a pretty good move for a freshman. It's a media timeout called. Three minutes, 32 seconds left here in the second quarter. It's a 10-point game. Bombers lead. from break, 10 point game. And Woodard was a show, I mean he was, 
early. He had nine points in a row for the Bombers. Slowed down a little bit, but his presence is definitely still there, causing havoc on the defensive and offensive side for the Braves. And it's not a bad thing for him to get his teammates involved a little bit more. So they, he's, that's what he's doing. Rogelio Pernetta converts on the three-point play. Now it's Woodard. To Northrop. Northrop driving. He goes up. <laughs> bounces around. Two points good. Wegman to Kinsey. Back to Kinsey. Now it's Dress. Dress in with a hand in his face. No good. Rebound brought in by Woodard. Or by Westerfield. To the corner, it's Northrup, and they say it bounces out of bounds. Forbes had the right idea there, just couldn't quite keep it uh, in, in catching range for Northrop. He, he also was claiming that, that somebody from Kamai can touch that ball on his pass, so he might have an argument, actually. Now it's Wegman. Getting the screen. Had him back door, but didn't like it. Wegman kicks out to Dress. Dress guarded by Northrop. With a hand in his face again. That time he gets it to go. Can't play much better defense than that. No, there's nothing you could do on that. Down low, it's Westerfield. Good work off the glass. It's a timeout called. Yeah, the call timeout for the Bombers. 30-second timeout. Still 10-point game. That was a really good uh, entry pass by Josh Woodard there to get it to Westerfield. Yeah, and I think what we'll see, try and see more of is they've been working the outside a lot. And yeah. I wouldn't be surprised at this point in the game they start going inside to Westerfield. And even Hornivet across the key, he's got the height for it. Uh, it's, it's just whether he's in the right spot and defenders are there or not. Um, but we saw that at the South of the game a couple times where they get it to Westfield inside, he cut it right across the key uh, to Hornivet, and, and it was just wide open. Yeah, you can do a lot of things when you get to a big guy like that. I mean, it, it, he's got a lot of mismatches, and it's kind of fun. to. It's one of the reasons I like watching Richland basketball is because they can go a lot of different ways on offense. Now it's Kinsey and Wegman. They work across half court. Kinsey guarded by Woodard. Malasani. Dress trying to work inside. Now Malasani can't get it to go from three. Northrup over to Daniels. Daniels wide open from three. No good. And it's a foul called over the back on Jack Forbes. Jack, Jack wasn't even close on that play. There was another guy between them, him and the guy who actually rebounded the ball. But uh, I'm not sure I would have called that still. He wasn't in on that play. Now it's Kinsey. Gets it in the wagger. Wegman down low. Malasani. Wegman over to Kinsey. Kinsey guarded by Daniels. Now it's Dress. Dress inside to Malasani with the mismatch. Turn around, jumper, no good. Brought in by Westerfield. Bombers will move quick. Over to Woodard. Pull up, jumper, no good. Brought in by Hornivet. Out to three, it's Northrup wide open, can't connect. That's the shot you want. Uh, you get the board, you go inside out, just couldn't quite get it to fall there for Northrup. Wagger, now it's on. Kinsey on Woodard, off the glass, that's good. About six seconds separate shot and game clock. 
Hornibet wastes no time. And Wooder now with no shot clock. Bombers calling for last shot. Ball's in Woodard's hand. Ten seconds on the clock now. They start their play. Woodard drives, pulls up, rattles around, no good. The final shot will be taken from half court. No good, and it's a foul called on James Kinsey. He's going to line, trying for three to end the half. And that is not the foul you want. Completely unnecessary going into the, going into halftime. Just one more to tack on to your personal foul. It was on Daniels. Kinsey makes it first. Second one good from Kinsey as well. Last one, no good. Heading into the half, it's 33-27. The Richland Bombers lead the Kamaiakan Braves.
two possessions basically going into this. So Kamiakin, I'll give Kamiakin some kudos here that they're still even in this game right now. Yeah, for sure. The well, second half of play is almost underway. Uh, it's the same starting lineups at the start of the game that are here in this third quarter. It's Kinsey, he gets it into Wegman. Malisani over to Kinsey. Kinsey from three, no good. Brought in by Forbes. Gets it up to Hornivet. Now it's Woodard. Northrop, Northrop from three, rattles around, no good. Now it's Dress. Down low, Malasani passes it to Wagger, and that right through his hands. He looked away before he had it. Northrop bring, setting the offense up. Forbes over to Woodard. Comes off the screen. Didn't have his mid-range jumper. Woodard drives, gets fouled as he's going down the lane. The Braves are kind of compacted in that, that defense, a uh, little zone action there. And so I think Richland's trying to figure out a way to, to get the ball inside or, or take the open shot. Foul there on Peter Dress. His uh, second of the game. Now they're back to man. Woodard out to Forbes. Westerfield down low. Off the side of the glass. It's going the other way. James Kinsey hands it off to Wagger. Inside, kicks out. From deep, it's Peter Dress, and that's good. Nothing but confidence on that shot there by Dress, and he makes it happen. Gets three for the Braves. Sometimes I think that should be worth four points so far out. Northrop over to Woodard. Driving, it's tipped out of his hands. And it's a foul called, but they'll call it on the ground. Woodard. Looking for Westerfield, he gets it to him. In the corner, Woodard drives, goes back down low to Westerfield, he goes up. Big slam a jam of Luke Westerfield. And I think they just threw out a tactical here, Max. Like a taunting or something? Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Luke might have said something to the Kamiakin player after he slammed it. That is Westerfield's first foul. Dress on the line. Two free throws. First one good by Dress. Cuts this lead to four. Second one good as well. And just like that, it's a three-point game. Westerfield signaled uh, to his teammates that he was kind of just showing his guns after that, and uh, that's what they got him for the technical. Wegman, guard by Hornivet. Wagger gets it over to Dress. Baseline, miscommunication. Dress was looking for Malisani. I think you're going to see the, the Braves try to get the ball a lot more to Dress this, this half. He only shot five uh, field goal attempts that first half. Water pulls up from three, in and out, no good. Kinsey moving quick the other way. Driving across the key, it's Malisani. It's blocked by Westerfield. Northrop down the lane. No good, brought in by Dress. Wagger. Fans wanted a foul on that Northrop shot. Didn't get it. Yeah. 
Now it's Wegman. Defense by Woodard. Couldn't, they couldn't get it to dress. Five seconds on the shot clock. And now it's Kinsey goes up, swatted, <laughs> got it back in his hands. And with one second left, he got that shot to go. Down low to Forbes, but it's tipped out of bounds by the Braves. That's pretty good composure by Kinsey to, to still maintain and get that shot off. It was his, he had a 4 nothing personal run at the end of that first half and got get them back in within two possessions. Into Westerfield. Footwork good, but couldn't get the basket to go. Now it's Gladney. Step back. Looked like he was going to take the three, but he didn't. Forbes got a, got a hand on it, but he tipped it out of bounds. Yeah, it's a good job by Forbes hunting that ball. Just couldn't quite keep it in bounds and keep their possession. Forbes is back on dress, too. So it's a, it was, Forbes and Landon Northrop have done a great job against dress. He's still going to get his points, but you're going to keep him from getting more. Wegman guarded by Hornovet. Into dress, stolen by Forbes. And they'll say he stepped out of bounds. That was that was close. Might have been just a, uh, his little toe or something. <laughs> Story for having a conversation with the ref. I don't really know what about, but. Where to eat after the game. <laughs> Wagger, guarded by Woodard. Drives right, goes up long on his attempt. Gladney gets it to Wegman. Over to Dress. Dress gets Forbes to jump right by him. Pulls up and money from beyond the arc. It's a solid play there by Dress. Get Forbes to jump and takes advantage of it. Three for, the, three for the Braves. It's first lead of the game since that first three-pointer by Dress to the Braves have held. 7-0 for Maya can run here, too. Woodard drives, yep. and he gets it to go. When in doubt, get it to Josh Woodard. <laughs> Kinsey over to Wegman. They get it across to Gladney. Kinsey to Dress. Dress spinning around, shot no good, and it's a foul called on Dress, just got his hands uh, wrapped up. Pretty hot about that, and I think they may be taking him out just to settle him down. And they will check him out. And it's a media timeout call. Three minutes, 27 seconds left. And it's tie ball game here in the third quarter. Ball game at three minutes and 27 seconds left here in this third quarter. The Bombers will have the ball. Max, great crowd tonight. Uh, you were saying earlier, what, when's the last time you saw it this fall? I, I think the last time I saw it, 
both student sections completely packed. It's probably that 2014 game uh, between these two teams. Uh, and that, I mean, that was that was an exciting match, and we have another one here. Yeah. It's Forbes out to Westerfield. Westerfield. Oh, and it's an off-ball foul called. Foul's called, I believe. They will call it on Deontay Howard. For, team's fourth foul, and if they pick up another one here, that's double bonus for the remainder of the, uh, the third quarter. Try to get Forbes high flyer there for the off the glass jumper, and no good. Wagger over to Kinsey. Back out to Wagger. They'll swing it around. It's Gladney with it. Drives, goes up, laying good. Now it's Northrop. Kicks it to the corner, horn of it. Inside to Forbes, back out to Northrop. Northrop fires from three. No good, brought in by Woodard. Woodard, no good on the drive. Travel. And it, it's a travel call. See, suddenly, the bomber's shots are just a bit off, and that's why it's not falling right now. It's a timeout call, 30-second timeout. Yeah, like you said, Jeff, the shots just aren't quite falling uh, here in this second half. And, and we talked about it early on. We thought they were going to start going inside, and they did start yeah. going inside. But even those shots are just rattling no, around and, right. and falling the opposite way than they want to. So what we're looking at right now is a Kamaikan 12-4 run in this quarter. And that's why they're back in this game and they have the lead by two points. One player for the Bombers uh, that's, I mean, he's been hot recently. He's landed Northrop. Only six points tonight. Three for nine from field goal and 0 for four from beyond the arc. Yeah. And, and he's a guy, if he gets hot, he's lethal. Exactly. His shot was, I saw him uh, sc just score a ton of points against Camus last month it was it was amazing everything he threw up from three-point land was was good into Westerfield right over the top of Gladney he's fouled on his way up and he's going to line shoot too Gladney just nicked his arm on his way up Westerfield misses the first. Second one good by Westfield. It's back to a one point game. Now it's Wagger. Over Cornetta. He get it across to Wagger, now he's guarded by Northrop. Back door, it's Wagger. Goes up on Westerfield. Fall away, floater, no good, and he's fouled. Good board there by Westerfield, covering up that back door and getting the stop to the Bombers. And I said it earlier, that fifth foul, I mean, it, it puts Westerfield on the line shooting too. And uh, I mean that's big. A lot of time left. Yep. Yeah. Two, two minutes left here in this third quarter. If the Bombers could take advantage of this, uh, it could it could help them out a lot. First good by Westerfield. It's a tie game. Second one, no good. Wagger, guarded by Woodard. Driving left, now it's Dress, guarded by Woodard. He gets the screen, goes opposite of it. Mid-range, and he's fouled on his way up. Shooting two. 
Bomber fans not happy about that. Well, Josh Woodard did a really good job defensively, and it wasn't called on him. It was called on Chris Daniels. Yeah, and, and they'll just say he came in a little late. Yeah. Good by Dress. Forbes will check in for Daniels. Peter Dress makes the second as well. Woodard will set up the offense down by two. In the corner, it's Woodard. Pump fakes, drives, kicks out to Forbes. Forbes drives now. He goes up off the glass. That's good. Man, that was that a good that take. That was a really good shot. Over to Kinsey. Looking inside, Forbes wasn't there. Or to Dress wasn't there. Renetta. Out to Gladney. Let's swing it over to Wagger. Dress from three with a hand in his face. No good. Braves will get the rebound, though. Glad he kept that alive. Shot up. No good and brought down by the Bombers. I'm surprised Glad he didn't get called for an offensive foul there. He really hooked it with, yeah. uh, with his other, and the flip there. There we go. Inside of Hornibet. He goes up. He's fouled on his way up. Good job there. Post it up using your height advantage over the defender and good job by Woodard by getting him the ball. Now, I don't think they've done that enough this game. They need to they need to do a little bit more. Especially with that with the height of Hornibet. I mean he's yeah. just as tall as any other player on that court for the Braves. First one's good by Hornibet. Hornet makes both. Wegman. About seven seconds, seconds separate shot and game clock. He'll get it across with Wegman. Now it's Kinsey. You got Woodard on Peter Dress right now. Now switched by Forbes. Stolen by Northrop. Gets it to Forbes. Forbes cuts back, goes to the lane. Off the glass, two points good by, from Jack Forbes. Under five on the clock. Wegman throws up one last shot, no good. After three quarters of play, it's a four point lead. The Bombers 45, the Braves 41.
Welcome back here to fourth quarter play. It's a four point lead for the Bombers and they'll start with the ball. It's Woodard setting the offense up for the Bombers. Gets it to Westerfield. Cutting, didn't like his look for Woodard. Down low is Hornibet. Baseline kicks out to Forbes. Now he drives baseline and he's taken down and that's a foul called Peter on the Dress. Braves. Peter Dress. That's his fourth personal foul and that is big for the Bombers. That fourth foul takes a really good player off this court, opening up at a lot of opportunity for the Bombers, both sides of the ball. Let's see if they can take advantage of this loss real quick. Into Forbes. Now it's Northrop inside the Western Field. Oh. It's stolen by Buchanan. Wagger. No, uh, no, a great ball movement. They find Kinsey wide open and can't connect. But it's saved by Malisani. Hands off to Buchanan. Grab by Hornovet. Another turnover. Woodard on the arc. Drives and he's foul call and it's a foul call on Malasani. They get it into Woodard. Woodard has the whole right side cleared out. Now it's Westerfield down low, cutting. Malasani guarding him. Off the glass, uh, it, just a long shot. Kinsey. Now it's stolen by Forbes. He goes up and elevates right over the defender. It's a big dunk there by Forbes. Just creating energy off that one play, and this is not the first time we've seen Jack Forbes dunk on the Braves. That was yeah, a great pickup by him. I, I tell you what, though, Josh Woodard is the guy that created that whole uh, havoc by uh, playing the great defense, and he may have tipped the ball away, and, and Forbes was right there to, and made the play. Yeah, Tanner, you said that's not the first time we've seen Forbes dunk the ball against the Braves. Uh, <laughs> last year against Akamayakin, um, Forbes kind of put the dagger in it. Now, I mean, another close game. These two teams can't not have a close yeah, game. Yeah, I know. And uh, I, part of that, I mean, look at this atmosphere here tonight. Yep. Uh, what what other way would you want to spend a Friday night inside Art Baywell Gymnasium? Uh, both sides packed. I mean, behind us, in front of us, student sections, both loud. Uh, it's an amazing atmosphere. I can't imagine uh, for the players how awesome it is. Oh, yeah. This reminds me of, like I said, I, I, we were talking off air earlier that I remember, I'm an old man, and I remember back in the, the mid-70s, 75, 76, when Richland was playing Pasco, you had to be here before the junior varsity game started if you were going to get into this place. And this is a, to me, I still think this is the biggest gym in the, in the mid-Columbia Conference. Back then, it was a big nine. So it, it was uh, it was pretty amazing. People were lined up outside well before the game gates even opened just to get in. It's kind of nice to see that again around here. I don't yeah, know. Back to back seasons now, uh, both both gyms have been jam packed yep. for, for this matchup. Wagger swings it over to Kinsey. Back to Wagger. Wagger. Peter dressed back in the game for the Braves with four fouls. You'll have to play cautiously. Yep. But they need him in there. Wagger drives on Northrop. Stolen by Buchanan. Over to Forbes. Forbes goes up off the glass. That's good. 
Now it's Buchanan. Dress with a hand in his face. That's money. Good from three. Wow. It's a good looking shot there by Dress. That's hard to guard. Woodard goes left. Jumper, that's good. Across half court with Dress. Now over to Kinsey. Wagner will set the offense up. Dress drives left, spins back right. Turnaround jumper off the rim. No good. Brought in by Northrop. Woodard. No hesitation. Money from beyond the arc. No hesitation and no contest. And with a guy like Woodard who's been playing how he is tonight, you got to get a hand in his face. And Josh has took advantage of that. 30-second timeout by the Braves. That, I mean, that was clutched by Josh. I mean, that was, yeah, it's amazing. An, that's an answer back to Peter Dresses. Dress did it from deep and with the hand in his face. And he, oh, there's some confusion going on. I believe they that said they, it was 30 seconds. Yeah. 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 Okay. So they're, they're double checking. Yeah, I know. Uh, Richland scored um, nine points in this quarter now. And I, I got to give Woodard a lot of credit for all, every one of those points. He found Jack Forbes on a, uh, uh, he tipped the ball to Forbes and he got a breakaway dunk. Then he, then he stole the ball the next time down and got it to Forbes for a lay-in. And then, of course, he's, he's, he stole the ball a, another time, made his shot, and then that three-point play. And like we said, Dress playing with four fouls. And if he goes out, that, I mean, that'd be big. Yeah, it would. Down low, nice Kim. Pass. I mean, he's wide open. Nice Great pass. find there by Gavin Buchanan. Woodard goes right. Drives middle, he goes up, wow. drives to the lane. <laughs> Great wow. finish. Kinsey guarded by Hornivet. Out to Malasani. Tipped by Northrop. And they'll say it's off of Northrop to Mike and Ball. Westerfield back in the game for Daniels. That's Wegman in the game for Buchanan. And Woodard and Forbes just switched off, but, but Woodard is spending a lot of time on dress right now. Now, now it's back over to Forbes. I also don't believe Woodard subbed out of the game once. I don't think so. Kinsey from three, no good. And Hornivet gets called for a foul. Second personal foul. And it's a media timeout called halfway through this fourth quarter. A 10 point game still. Bombers trailed a little bit there uh, by, I believe, the largest by three points. Right. Uh, coming out of the half, and they, they gained back that 10 point lead largely due to Peter Dress having to sub out due to his foul trouble. I mean, Dress has 21, next guy has 10. Now, for right. Bombers, they got Woodard with 22, Forbes with 14, and uh, Luke Westerfield with 10. So they're spreading the love a little bit. Yeah, Peter Dress hit two, three two free throws in that third quarter to give them a 41 to 39 lead. But from that point on, it's been, it, Richland's been on a 17 to five run to take control of this game. And we talk, I talked about Woodard, but in that run, Jack Forbes has got uh, eight points himself. Yeah, and Forbes, uh, he's the guy who will bring the energy in yeah. during the third quarter for the Bombers. Um, you know, it, you need someone who's going to get that, that momentum swing and dunk or, or whatever you need, uh, and that's going to be Forbes. A lot of the times it does happen uh, in that third quarter as well when they need it most. Right. Wagger inbounding for the Braves. Richardson's in his zone now. It looks like a 2-3. 
dress from deep. In and out, no good. Woodard fighting for it, it'll be a jump ball. Jump ball, possession arrow in favor of the Braves. A little emotion out there on the floor. Getting it in from Alisani. Now it's Dress. Guarded by Forbes. Double team. And it's a foul called. And it will be on Josh Woodard. Second team foul. And only his second. That was a smart play. He came right around the corner. He was, uh, dress was covered, but here comes Woodard, and he almost picked it. Kinsey, that oh. time Woodard got it out of his hands. Kinsey drives baseline, goes up and under, swatted by Westerfield. Out of bounds. Three minutes, 26 seconds on the clock. Ten-point game. Into Malasani, okay. wide open. Braves finally get something to go after that long offensive possession. Woodard over to Northrop, in the corner it's Hornovet. Hornovet wide open, no good. Westerfield tipped it out to Woodard. Oh, Down yeah. low to Hornovet, wide oh, open. Oh. Couldn't get it to go, that's a big miss. Woodard now, he drives, kicks out to Northrop. Hornovet finds Woodard down low, up and under, another missed opportunity down low. Wegman, no good. Uh -oh. It's a foul called on the Braves. We see uh, checking for a little bit of sweat or something on the, the floor. Certainly don't want to see anybody get hurt. Three fouls for the Braves and two for the Bombers. And I say that because I mean, foul trouble is completely different now with the new rules yeah. of five fouls, immediate double bonus. Um, and it used to be seven fouls, single bonus, ten double bonus. Uh, and, and that's a big deal here late in the games. And I, I wouldn't be surprised one, or one bit if it, if it is a big game changer in some close games. Yeah, there we go. Woodard uses his quarterback skills and finds Hornovet down low. Dress. Drove somehow, drove and got past those defenders. Really good take by Peter Dress. Eight point game with two minutes, 15 seconds on the clock. Woodard, he drives, goes oh, to Hornovet. Yeah. Alley oop. Josh Woodard to Lance Hornovet. What a play there. I mean, just completely caught the Braves off sides. And we gonna give him a technical? They'll call it another technical foul. Another technical. And the fans really disagree with that one. I mean, what an athletic play there by Horvath. And great dish by Josh. First one made by Dress. Earl wants an explanation, and I don't blame him. I, I didn't see anything, unless he said no. something. I didn't see it either. And most of the time, they'll get a technical on them hanging on the rim, and there yeah. definitely was none of that on that play. Uh -uh. Into Wagger. Now Kinsey. Guarded by Northrop. He's looking for dress. Right over the top of him. Out of bounds. Bomber ball. Kinsey thought he was there. Thought he'd saw him, but dress had no clue and just kept going around the corner. A simple turnover that could really can't be having those right now, Jordan. 
And it's a fourth full, period. It's a full timeout called with a minute 53 seconds. Bombers lead by eight. We'll send you to break. One fifty-three left in this ball game, eight-point game. Now the Bombers are definitely trying to. They got to hold on to it, and the Braves—they're going to do everything they can to mount a comeback. Northrop gets it across to Hornibet. Oh. Downloads Forbes. Forbes goes up off the glass. Athletic play. It's a great shot there by Forbes. Heavily contested, but he makes it happen. Kinsey drives right across the key. Malasani. Ball is passed, and they save it from going over the back. Great at play by Wagger. Kinsey goes up, oh. gets it to go. He's going to line, trying for three. Both teams with three fouls now. Oh, no. Bombers with four fouls, and that's huge. That is huge um, late, late in this game. Kinsey trying for three. No good, rattles around. It's brought in by Westerfield. Now it's Woodard. Gets a screen from Westerfield. Goes the other way. Gets it to Westerfield. He'll swing it over to Forbes. Now it's Hornibat with it in the corner. Westerfield finds Forbes. No, and it's stolen. It's going the other way. Tipped by Hornibat. Great hustle play with under a minute left. It's an eight-point game still. Malasani subs in for Buchanan. In the Malasani. Now it's Dress. Dress from deep. And they'll call the foul on Westerfield. And that's a fifth foul. And that's three shots for Dress, who is very good on the line and Westerfield just nicked his hand which caused the ref to blow the whistle and call that foul. Luckily he did not make that three. Cuts the lead to seven. Dress makes the second. It's almost like an extra timeout for Kamayak and Brian Manili has his uh, other four players earlier talking to him. All three good from Dress. Makes now, it a five point game with just 50 seconds left. Woodard. He'll get over to Northrop. Forbes to Westerfield. Yeah, they got a foul now. 
Braves got one more foul to give until the Bombers are in double bonus and on the line. 12 seconds still on the shot clock. That was only their fourth foul, so they, they're not going to go to the line. It was a, So now, what does Kamai can do here? They get into Westerfield. And they'll call it a double dribble. Wow. And that's a critical turnover here, giving the Braves the ball with 33 seconds left. And they were trying to foul him, too. Yeah, they were. It's a timeout called on the Bombers. Full timeout will stay here, 62-57. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's huge, um, a, a huge turnover because they were trying to just foul him and get him to the line. Which, yeah. Whether that's, that's points or not, it, it doesn't just take away the opportunity for points. Um, best way to score points is when the clock's not running. Right. Uh, and, and late in the game, that's huge. They could have gotten that lead to seven. Uh, and Westerfield, obviously, I didn't, obvi obviously didn't try to double dribble, uh, just maybe nicked it with his other hand at the same time. Uh, so big turnover. Now both teams do still have one timeout remaining. Like we said, Bombers with five fouls and Braves with one or with four. So they have one or next foul will go uh, to the free throw line. But Bombers, if they foul the Braves, they're on the line. Because every time you think that Kamayakin's going to fall behind and get out of this game, they, they find a way to come back. It's just uh, it's like a heavyweight uh, championship prize fight right now. Kinsey. Inbounding for the Braves. It'll be Wagger that'll bring up the court for the Braves. They get across to Wegman. Now it's Kinsey. Kinsey drives. He goes. And it's on the ground. Brought in by the Braves. Three is up. Left short. And it's a foul called. And Lance Hornivet will be going to the line for double bonus. It's a great rebound there to get the Bombers in possession and get them on the line. Coach Brian Manili kind of giving it to uh, James Kinsey. You can't take shots like that. A rough shot. They still had an opportunity for uh, two more shots. And if they can sink, if, if Hornovec can sink both, it'd make it real tough. Really good. Yep. First good by Hornovec. One more makes it a three possession game. <laughs> it rattles around and falls. Kinsey ah. blocked by Westerfield. It's brought in by Buchanan. Now it's Kinsey from three. Kinsey no good. Brought in by Westerfield. And he is fouled. Two seconds on the clock. Kind of surprised that they didn't set something up for Peter Dress. And, you know, this is, that's your guy. I mean, the second he crosses half court, he's in range, and yep. I, I, I do find that very interesting uh, that they didn't that they didn't set yep. some up for him. Westfield missed that first meaningless, uh, basically meaningless free throw, but made the yep. second. And time will expire, and he couldn't get the last shot to go. At the end of regulation, at 65-57, the Bombers take down the number four ranked in the state, Mike and Braves, and gain that number one position in the MCC after this matchup here in Art Day Wall Gymnasium. We'll be back here shortly with the post-game show.
Welcome back here to the post-game show. Uh, it, I'm, I'm solo, I'm waiting for the interviews here. Uh, but just kind of a recap of the stats. Josh Woodard leading the charge for the Bombers. 22 points, seven rebounds, six assists, and six steals. Uh, those steals, I mean, that was incredible uh, on the defensive end. It, it turned those into offense. I mean, big time, turned those into offense. And, and the big thing is turnover points for the Bombers with 24. They held the Braves to nine turnover points. Now for the Braves, Peter Dress had eight points in that first half, 20 points in the second half. Uh, so big second half for Dress. Uh, I believe Woodard's coming on here right now, and he is. There we go. All right, we're here with Josh Woodard now. Uh, Josh, camera's up there, I got so you. it's a long ways away. Um, but first off, a crowd like this, I mean, students, both student sections packed. Can you just walk me through that walking out, not even the whole game, but just walking out into that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome. I mean, you don't get that everywhere in high school basketball, um, but you definitely get that at Richland. I mean, that's the culture. That's what we do. We show up for each other, and it's, it's always fun to play Kamaiakin because that's what you get. You get their fans, our fans, and you get a packed gym. So, uh, so 22 points, that's one thing. Six steals, five of those coming in the first quarter. Uh, just what was going on in your brain? You were moving quick. You were hands on every, every time they went down. Yeah, they, uh, we kind of put that in the game plan to me, kind of, you know, look to hunt steals early and try to, try to make people nervous about coming in our paint. And so uh, that's what I was able to do. A couple people put their heads down. I was just able to shoot the gap and get it. Uh, so you guys had 24 points off of turnovers uh, and helped Kamaik in the nine. Can you just tell me the, the, how important it is, that stat alone, uh, in a, in a co close game like this? Um, it's very important. I mean, uh, our defense hasn't been great all year, and I feel like tonight we really showed that, you know, we have it in us to be a, a great defensive team, but we just got to play with energy and effort every single time we step on the floor. All right. End of that game, obviously, you guys – ended up winning that just walk me through the emotion uh when when that finer blood buzzer blew i mean who doesn't like to be, love to be kamaikin i mean it's always a great feeling so all right i appreciate it josh really good job tonight fun watching you thank you now All right, welcome, Coach. Uh, big game tonight. I, I asked Josh as a player what it's like to play in front of a crowd like this, but as a coach, uh, I mean, what's the emotion in, in the timeouts, everything that's going on? Well, what a great experience for our kids, right? Um, people showed up on both sides, really competitive game, and a lot of good things to watch. I mean, you can't ask for anything better. Uh, so coming into tonight, Braves were ranked fourth in the state. You guys are in 16th. What do you do to kind of get your team ready for 
a potential comeback like that or well, upset like that? Well, I don't think it's really an upset because I think the rankings are kind of silly. I don't think I, I don't think a lot of times the guys, you know, you vote those you vote for teams that you think are good and you know, gosh, you got to play all the games, right? And so um, we've got a long way to go. We got we can get a lot better. Uh, we gave them a lot of extra opportunities today that you do that at their place, you're going to lose. So uh, we got a lot of growth to still make. And um, like I said, I just don't really care about the rankings. I just care about where we're at at the end of the year and at the end of every game. Uh, so 24 points off of turnovers. Um, and, and you guys held Kamaiakin to nine points off of turnovers. Um, and Josh kind of talked talk to me about how that was in the game plan to have them go in, steal, uh, and kind of pickpocket while they were driving. What, what was the reason for that going into the game? Well, we just feel like um, we have a, actually, we just haven't guarded great in the half court against a lot of teams. You know, at moments we play really well, and other times we're a little disengaged, and so um, we made a decision uh, a week or so ago that we got to do some things differently and give our guys a, some different opportunities, and they responded really well after two days of, of working on a, a little pseudo press there and um, played downhill tonight. And, you know, when Josh is going like that, we're a pretty good ball club. All right, well, I appreciate it, Coach. Good luck at Kennewick tomorrow night. Right um, we'll, we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining right. us, as always. Thanks again, Matt. All right, that'll wrap up tonight's show. Uh, here on Atomic TV, I'm Max Schuster. Thank you to both those, uh, Coach Coach Schroefer and Josh Wooder for joining me on the interview, uh, and, and the guys, Jeff Morrow, special guest, and, and Tanner Schuster, my cousin. Uh, thank you guys for joining us tonight, and as always, go Bombers.